What's up Mountaineers? This is Brian, AKA Rev. And I wanted to take just a second here on Ammo Mountain to talk to you about some general pre preparedness. A lot of you guys, a lot of you guys have expressed to me in different formats, whether in person or online, here on YouTube or in uh, social media or some other place, uh, as we've been uh, meeting each other at trade shows and in training and uh, out in the general community, the gun culture uh, for years now, many of you have expressed different areas of expertise, different areas that you're particularly focused in, on when it comes to uh, having a, a, a kind of preparedness for different events that your family and that, that your family or you as an individual may encounter. Um, the gun part of that, uh, the training part of that, is only one component of a much broader conversation. And, and honestly, it is uh, probably not the most important part of that broad conversation, but it is a part that, um, that this channel and other channels have focused on. for the, uh, So I wanna to talk to you about an area that you are probably less prepared in than you, uh, than you think you are. And maybe you're going to hear me out and you're gonna say, you know, that's not something that's high on my agenda. That's fine. I just want to throw it out to you. Um, many have uh, paracord sta staged in their vehicle or in their go bag or in multiple locations because of the, the multiple areas of utility for paracord, kind of like Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape. Um, many of you have found, you know what, I'm going to have extra batteries, I'm going to have some of these different things, uh, lights, you're going to have some of these things because just in everyday life and especially in uh, times when there are um, extra pressures on life, you found that, that some of those tools can create solutions when other people might be stuck or dead in the water. I want to throw out one, uh, one similar thing to paracord that is just as, in my opinion, just as useful and in some ways more useful, and that is uh, tubular or flat webbing uh, that you can pick up at uh, REI or just any outdoor store across the country. It uh, used to be, right now, it's probably between 30 to 50 cents a foot. Um, it's not incredibly expensive, and various lengths can be stored in a very small um, situation, i.e. the back of your car, um, a, a, a go bag, uh, behind the seat in your truck. Um, th they can be in lots of locations and tubul tubular webbing or flat webbing, this happens to be blue water uh, tubular webbing from REI. Um, and, and this has all kinds of uses. I'm not going to go through the mall right now, but say you're like, I'm not, I'm not a rock climber, so I'm not going to invest. I'm not going to spend money in uh, climbing harnesses. I would say that some of these things, like a climbing harness and a belay device or a repelling device like a Grigory or what is commonly, this is actually the blue water version, but the Black, uh, Black Diamond came out with one of the first ones. So what most people call an ATC or uh, a simple belay device, or even uh, a figure eight if it has a square end to it that uh, a rope can be pushed through on a bite and you can put your carabiner through that end to be able to belay from it. If you're gonna buy a, a figure eight, for one, for one, I would encourage you to think about something with broader utility than a figure eight. A figure eight is primarily just for repelling and repelling is a very small, uh, small and, and specific use set. If you're gonna do that, at least buy one that has uh, the ability to double as a belay device. Um, and honestly, there are, uh, there are better choices in my opinion, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, one of the best bang for the buck, especially if you may be in a situation where somebody that, that, that does not have training um, may be pressed into service. Um, not that I would ever encourage somebody to climb with a partner that doesn't have training, but we're talking about extreme survival situations where you, you may have 
to use the tools at your disposal to get somebody down out of a, a situation. Um, Grigory or an auto locking tool like this one made by Petzl is a great, great tool to have in your vehicle. Um, but say I'm not going to, I'm not going to have that. You know, webbing can be made into a harness via Swiss seat in just a few minutes. Um, it's not difficult to do. It's not as comfortable, but it is as safe. It's, it's a good, viable solution. You say, I'm not a rock climber. There are so many situations that I've found over the years where um, the ability to create an anchor or have a harness um, and a, a line like a rope has had real, real usefulness. So many situations from um, felling trees safely to, um, I mean, the, the, I don't want, I don't want to go, in fact, in the comments below, you throw out some of the things that you can imagine, but it, you're smart people. If you start thinking, you'll think of lots of ways that a, a lightweight thing, going back to webbing, a lightweight tool like this that uh, holds, depending on, and this is one inch web, webbing, um, it, it, it is rated for four to 6,000 pounds, depending on if you're doing tubular, which is lower weight, like 4,000 pounds, but has some advantages, or flat webbing, which is rated around, normally around 6,000 pounds, and has some advantages and some disadvantages. Um, I would encourage you to think about, uh, and again, th the weight uh, limit goes up significantly or down a little bit, but, but that's about as low as you're gonna get the weight limit on this. Uh, that is webbing to webbing. Uh, but there's a lot of ways to create greater mechanical advantage in the anchor that you use where this will hold 10,000 pounds, um, 10,000 pounds, 12,000 pounds, uh, lots of ways to do that. That's incredible. You think about something that if you had to, uh, could hold many of your vehicles. Now, obviously that's not what we're carrying these for, but something that you spent 30 to 50 cents a foot on and could be pressed into service in a number of, of ways because of its strength and because of, uh, uh, though it has, it has a relatively static or taut um, dy component to it, it, it does have enough stretchiness, enough dy dynamic characteristics to not snap on you. It's an incredible tool, not just for climbing anchors, you say, I'm not a rock climber. I'm telling you, having tubular webbing or flat webbing from your local outdoor store in links, I would recommend um, 15 foot links, 10 foot links, 20 foot links. Getting beyond that is, is normally, I mean, unless you've got a specific use, not, not really needed. Um, 10 and 15 foot lengths are really, really, really useful. They have a lot of utility. Um, and, you know, you can daisy chain them or however you want to, um, however you want to uh, make them storable and packable and, and easily, quickly clean and accessible. Um, here are a few harnesses that if you're going to go a step farther and not, not instead of, but in addition to, uh, you're gonna have a, a climbing harness. Uh, I think the modern version of this is a Black Diamond Vision. It's a great harness. A little bit more multi-purpose, especially if you're, you're thinking, I'm a, I might do some rock climbing, but I primarily just want to have something from a preparedness standpoint. Um, lots of different uses uh, could, could go in uh, to this. This is a Petzl uh, Corax 2. It's less expensive. It's very well padded. It has some... Um, some attachments to it, has a good belay loop, uh, and is very adjustable. Those are really, really useful tools. Um, think about your, your hiking. I'll, I'll give you a real example. Um, I found myself as a small child hiking with my, one of my friends who had very limited Ability. I was young, so I hadn't done a lot of backcountry stuff. I was backpacking with my mom and my dad. 
and there was a big washout down where the path was supposed to go off of the Appalachian Trail. As we we're walking down this trail beside of a, a, uh, a waterfall coming down into a valley from a crest and there was a lot of exposure, uh, not very much to hold on to and quite a bit of erosion. As you know, trails around, uh, around the, the United States and, and the East Coast, they have volunteers that service them, but the farther in the back country you get, the farther away you get, the, the less upkeep some of those trails get and, and erosion does its thing. So because of the exposure, because of the, the risk, um, my dad chose to take a line out of his pack and connect us. And sure enough, my friend Adam slipped. And if he had not been uh, tied to us, I don't think he would have gone all the way down. I don't think he would have been, you know, crashing to his death in, uh, in the waterfall area there. I don't think that's the case at all, but I do think he would have been pretty banged up and probably stopped by a tree several, several feet lower than um, being tied together allowed for. Um, something simple like some webbing does that trick nicely. Um, I'll show you my, uh, my newer climbing rope. I just retired my old climbing rope. Um, by the way, when it comes to webbing types, if you have a brand uh, option, uh, one of my favorites is the, like this, the blue water tubular uh, webbing. It's triple stick, it's, it's a great product. Black Diamond, Petzl, Metolius, uh, all make great versions as well. Here is a brand new rope, a brand new rope. This is a Black Diamond 60 meter, nine by nine, so a, a kind of a good all purpose rope. Um, that has not been climbed on yet. Maybe you guys will come climbing with me uh, as this Virgin line gets its first um, its its first uh, use. Um, the line that it's replacing is a little bit more sport climbing oriented. Just a little bit more. This is a nice light. Uh, it was a more expensive line that that it's replacing. It was a two color and dry rope, but this is not going to be ice climbing or it, it out in, I'm getting older, it's not gonna be out in cold weather environments, likely. Um, and if it had to, it would be okay for, um, not ice climbing, but for uh, the, what, what it might get uh, selected to do. So, that, took a, that was a longer video than I meant for it to, to be. I would encourage you to go and spend all of $15 or $20 or whatever you're going to spend to go out and just get some, get some webbing and put it in the locations that you keep your, your paracord, your, uh, your duct tape, your, your Gorilla Tape, what, th those kind of things. Those just like, hey, these are good problem solving tools. You are going to find, I promise you, you're going to find that climbing webbing is as utilitarian, if not more, than most of those, especially if you use some simple knots like, um, like a water knot. Uh, Google, and, and if you don't know, if you want me to do a video, but I'm sure it's all over YouTube already, uh, do a, a water knot. Just Google water knot. Um, that's a, you, you say, I, I want to know how to make a Swiss seat. If you want me to do that, I'll do a video. It's, it's easy. How do you turn this into a climbing harness? It's really easy to do. Uh, we can do that in a future video as well. Let me know what you're interested in and we'll do it.